Mega Evolution. This is the big question. Has Pokemon forgotten about Mega Evolutions? Have they scrapped the idea? Do they want us to forget about Mega Evolutions like they never existed? Well, let's let's take it a step back. Mega Evolutions in 2013 is when Pokemon changed the game, made it worldwide, and went in with a banger, which is Pokemon X and Y. That was five years ago exactly. January 8th. 2013 was the announcement it's freaking 2018 we literally sound like we're in the future and when they introduced x and y and upgrading it to the 3d graphics one of the big things that they added aside from the fairy typing was super saiyan forms for pokemon freaking mega evolution it was kind of weird in the beginning like you saw a koro koro scan of this new mewtwo and everyone just had crazy mixed ideas. Is this Mew 3? Mew 2 was the first Mega Evolution ever shown. And it kind of easily gives you the idea of what Mega Evolution was supposed to be. It was just supposed to be this upgraded temporary form for Pokemon. And then in August of 2013 is when they revealed what Mega Evolutions are. They revealed us Mega Lucario, Absol, Ampharos, Mawile, Blaziken, and Mew 2. Dude, that felt like forever ago. For like the first day, people are like, what the hell is Mega Evolution? Y'all are messing with the game. And then for every single day after that, freaking Pokemon fans loved the concept of there being this temporary transcendent form for Pokemon. Literally a Super Saiyan form. They got everything right. They called it Mega Evolution. It gives them a new ability. And it increases their own base stats by 100, which makes a bunch of Pokemon like Beedrill and Mawile way better. And it actually touched really well as a Pokemon feature. Something that when you show a kid who plays Pokemon, he would be interested in. Unlike some of the other stuff they introduced later on, but we'll get to that in a second. They went in a really good direction with what their idea for Mega Evolution was supposed to be. It was to give light to older Pokemon without changing the Pokemon itself. They wanted to essentially make an evolution for Charizard, Kangaskhan and crap without making it so Charizard and Kangaskhan feel incomplete. And there's actually an interview here. Let me see if I can pull it up. Where did the idea or inspiration for Mega Pokemon come from? The idea was one of the original concepts of X and Y when we began developing the game about three years ago. We had the concept of beauty, the concept of bonds to deepen the relationship between people and Pokemon, as well as the concept of evolution. On the concept of evolution, we were literally just trying to do something new. One thing we were saying was evolve evolution. Evolution is one of the defining characteristics of the Pokemon games. However, if we were just to add another stage of evolution and make it a permanent thing, that would mean there's a stronger Pokemon than the current highest evolution stage. It would make the previous Pokemon weaker and mess with the balance. He's totally right with this point. There's even examples for before when X and Y came out. When Generation 4 came out and Magmortar, Electivire, and Rhyperior came to be, there are a lot of people pissed. I thought freaking Magmortar was ugly too. Of course, it's grown on to me. But at the time, seeing that Magmar is no longer the cool Pokemon, like you imagine it, Blaine's Magmar, one of the strong Pokemon. Now it's like a freaking pre-evolution. Now you gotta evolve it again in order for it to look big. And that's kind of the problem they wanted to fix here. They didn't want Magmar to be irrelevant because Magmar is the new thing. That's not a good example. A better example is Charizard. They didn't want Charizard to freaking sound like a weak, unevolved Pokemon. So they wanted to give it this super form. It would make the previous Pokemon weaker and mess with the balance. So when thinking about how we could do something new with evolution, as well as make it a lot of fun for players, we came up with the idea of using Mega Stones and making Mega Evolution just a temporary thing during battle. This is a freaking solid idea. There was literally nothing wrong with Mega Evolution. And the fact that you had to hold a Mega Stone made it freaking incredible for the metagame. There's so many cool techniques and new strategies people came up with. And even the whole speed thing where it takes till the next turn for your speed stat to raise. The metagame really was shook in, in a good way around that time. Masada goes on to explain to himself, by making him hold a Mega Stone, it prevents the Pokemon from holding other items like leftovers, berries, or gems, and it adds more depth to the strategy of the battle, because now when reading your opponent's strategy, they could have a normal item, they could have a Mega Evolution, or they could have one of two Mega Evolutions, in Charizard and Mewtwo's case. So that was your concept for Mega Evolution in 2013. No, in freaking 2010. Because they said they began developing X and Y three years before its announcement in 2010. So while Black and White and Black 2 and White 2 are being created, they've had this revamp for Pokemon being planned for a while. And they've been hoping that people would be on board to make Pokemon a full bigger thing. Making it international, I can't even remember the days of when a Pokemon game would come out in Japanese eight months before in English, where people don't care as much anymore. It really was a step in the right direction. And things only got better when the year after, they announced Auras, and they revealed that there are even more Mega Pokemon. I think there are 15 more Mega Evolutions introduced into Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. No, there's just under 50 Mega Evolutions as of just two years since it was introduced in 2013, which, if you look at it from Pokemon's eyes, starts to get a bit scary, because Pokemon moves up with each generation. The past becomes the past, and people are just hyped for what's coming new. They don't really 
they establish each game as like a ground, they just want more and more. So when they're flying through Mega Evolutions this quick, freaking four years later in 2018, who knows if we'd be at like 70 Mega Evolutions and approaching 100 by the next games. I think this is where Pokemon decided to draw the line. And when Sun and Moon came out, they decided instead of introducing more Mega Evolutions to step away and introduce something under a similar concept, which very similar to Mega Evolution, you have to have a bracelet, you give your Pokemon an item to hold, and it awakens this fifth slot to do something. Use a one-hit KO move. And with the way they handled Z-moves in Sun and Moon, there's one Z-move for all of the 18 types, and then infinite more Z-moves. You could have a new Z-move for every single Pokemon, which easily works in Pokemon's eyes. Longevity, ease, not flying through a million new Pokemon forms. It makes a lot more sense for Pokemon, and it almost gets scary because since they've made Z-moves for individual Pokemon, it almost brings up the question of whether Mega Evolution is being scrapped, becoming a thing of the past for something more long-lasting in Pokemon, which is Z-moves. Now, I think people can generally agree in Pokemon that Z-moves aren't as freaking interesting as Mega Evolution. When a new trailer comes out and it's a 30-second clip of them introducing a Z-move for Como, I know a lot of people aren't really interested in that because it's just it's just a one KO move. Which Z moves are cool, but it's just a move at the end of the day. It's just a technique that a Pokemon uses. And you know, even moving away from Z moves, the idea that they wanted to introduce more forms for Pokemon, work with the existing Pokemon more, and that's why they ended up making a super evolved state. They kind of solved that issue in Sun and Moon still, introducing regional variants where they can make an ice type sand slash and ice type nine tails. It's like freaking Alolan Golem. That freaking looks like a mega golem. I know, not literally, but even read its Pokedex entry. It used to be a raw ground type and it literally gets all this electric energy, which it can handle because it's grounded and starts wielding it, turning into a rock electric type. And you look at it, it's got the freaking beard and all. It almost looks like a freaking mega golem. It's almost like they jump too far with the mega evolution and then they realize that they could just do different things instead of making it so like seven years from now people are just expecting 30 mega evolutions for each game expecting all this crap and they don't need to do all that for a pokemon game and they're right which is what's scary they're right that setting people's expectations so high only makes it worse and worse for each game it's almost like mega evolution has been split into original variants which they could infinitely expand they can make it so each time they do remix of a game or revisit regions or even a brand new region in gen 8 they could have regional variants of existing Pokemon, a freaking Generation 8 region Pupitar and Tyranitar. And that would be a safer and more long-lasting path than introducing Mega Evolution. And when you hear rumors that the next Pokemon games for the Switch might even be more focused on Z Crystals than Mega Evolution, it really makes things scary. Exeggutor, literally getting more sunlight, more energy, and transforming into a palm tree. If you took this back to 2013, that's the kind of concept art people would be drawing. It's like they're expressing their ideas in a more long-lasting way through regional variants and maintaining that concept of having an item for your Pokemon that can awaken this fifth slot thing. It's like they split Mega Evolution into Z moves and regional variants, which is freaking infinitely long-lasting, freaking five generations down the line. Unlike Mega Evolution, which gets scarier and scarier when seven years down the line, there's like 200 Mega Evolutions. Pokemon would look back and be like, this is too much. So here, I got a good answer to the question. So I'm going to pull up a few more interviews that Masuda has talked about Mega Evolution. This one is from Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire's time when they're talking about what Pokemon they decided to give Mega Evolutions for. How do you decide which Pokemon you're going to Mega Evolve? Omri says, in terms of how we determine which Pokemon get Mega Evolution, of course Mega Evolutions were introduced in X and Y and we're adding a lot more this time around. And we've been monitoring how people have been playing the game, what Pokemon they're using in tournaments, and even the online raiding battles. So seeing which Pokemon are prominently used a lot, we'll come up with ways to improve the balance and shake things up. For example, we come up with Mega Evolutions that can counter these Pokemon to improve the battle experience. And that's one of the reasons we chose Mega Evolutions. Other than that, some of the game designers at Game Freak really want to work on certain Pokemon, so they'll of course choose some. Or, from a story perspective, which Pokemon will make sense. So we'll choose some that way as well. We'll also take into consideration fan favorites, which Pokemon fans would be excited to see Mega Evolve. It's really a mixture of methods in how we choose which Pokemon have Mega Evolutions. So you can see, they, they're going with the fans. They're going with the flow of the fans. You go to a tournament, freaking Pachirisu is dominating, they're going to make a Mega Evolution to nerf that Pachirisu. Sorry, not literally, but they're going with the flow. Every year, they're studying the audience, 
and working on the games based off that which isn't bad but in terms of longevity it gets scary if you're just going with the flow like that here's another interview from sugimori sugimori says for erun he needed to have a pokemon that could have flying secret power and the best combination for that was in flygon it doesn't mega evolve but i really like flygon interviewer asks key characters often carry a pokemon that can mega evolve but flygon is an exception right sugimori says flygon had the potential to mega evolve since x and y but we weren't able to complete a design so it was dropped from consideration See, it's expectations. To make Mega Evolution means to essentially create a fourth evolution. And that really is making it overblown for Pokemon. It really takes it in a direction that's hard to maintain. And look, you had freaking Drawers Block for Artist Block. <laughs> since X and Y's time, since whatever time, between 2010 and 2013, they already had a bunch of Pokemon they're trying to work on, but it gets tough and tough. If they had to make a regional variant for Flygon, where it lives in like a snowstorm or something, you know Sugimori could draw something up. But when they gotta try satisfying Pokemon fans by essentially giving a fourth evolution to a bunch of Pokemon, it really makes it scary. Alright, this is the big interview though. Sun and Moon. He did an interview during Sun and Moon's time talking about Mega Evolution as well. Are y'all ready for this? Eurogamer asks Junichi Masada why there was a change in focus from Mega Evolutions in Generation 6 games to the new mechanic known as Z-Crystals and Z-Moves in the Gen 7 games. Masada replies, This time around, we've got various different things for people to enjoy in Pokemon Sun and Moon, and one of these things is Z-Moves. This is something every Pokemon can use. What we have now is a way for people to use the Pokemon they want to use, so their favorite types, their favorite Pokemon, even those which perhaps weren't so popular before, now they can focus on their favorites in battle. That's why we focused on Z-Moves this time around. This is a big thing. This goes exactly with what I've been saying. When Mega Evolutions are introduced, people had to have one of the 50 Mega Evolutions on their party. And it wasn't necessarily for every Pokemon. And they couldn't just make a Mega Evolution for every Pokemon. So it actually made the metagame start focusing towards something again, instead of expanding for broad and multiple different strategies. Now people can use whatever Pokemon they want, their favorite types, their favorite Pokemon, so they can make strategies of anything. They don't have to have a Mega Pokemon as the base of their strategy and then work around it. Previously, there are Pokemon that weren't perhaps used too much in battle, and they're perhaps going to come to the fore a bit, more like, ah, I can use this this way, and perhaps make a different effect than was previously possible. This is giving purpose to the random Pokemon without giving it something big like a Mega Evolution. With freaking Z Crystals, you can make Audino much more usable without introducing Mega Audino. With every single Mega Evolution, the concept starts becoming more washed out. Of course, Audino isn't the best example, but instead of introducing a Mega Evolution to make it more usable, when Audino's time comes, they'll just introduce the Audinium Z and then give it its own special ability. Like when you use its Z-move, it heals all its HP and then does damage to the opponent equal to that or something. Like each Pokemon have their unique ability without having this overblown transformation. Each time we make a new game, we think of a particular theme and of particular elements that would work well with that game. This time we have our Z moves, but if a game comes up in the future that we think Mega Evolutions would really work well with, certainly we'll look into it. But for the minute, we don't have any particular plans. So as of whenever they were developing Sun and Moon, let's just say freaking 2015, they were thinking that Mega Evolution clearly is really overblown and hard to maintain over the years. And they came up with the ideas of Z moves and regional variants. Clearly, they're testing the water with Z crystals in Sun and Moon. They're hoping it could be a solid replacement to Mega Evolution because it would be a lot more manageable. That's sort of the answer to the question, but that's not just it. Of course, Game Freak, they're not going to tell us if they are working on more Mega Evolutions, but they're hoping that they don't have to rely on introducing all these new forms in order to hype people up they're clearly hoping that regional variants and z crystals would suffice enough and if they have to they can return to mega evolution but they don't know yet they're hoping of course not there's a lot of reason for them to shift away from mega evolution and focus on something more long lasting i don't know if i made it sound like i hate mega evolutions of course everyone loves mega evolutions it was like the coolest Pokemon thing they've done in a long time. And what sucks is that they've already done it. So if they decide to scrap it now, it's just kind of lingering in our face forever. Like, hey, remember Mega Blaze again, Mega Tyranitar? They're never doing that again. Of course, it gives a special status to those Pokemon, which while you think might sound a bit unorganized, actually works out with the lore of Pokemon. Mega Evolution was created by the ultimate weapon using Xerneas and Evelto's power, and it created these shards these little crystals that Pokemon could use to tap into this extreme power. Now, you, you may think this because of what Aerodactyl's Pokedex entry says, 
But Mega Evolution is not like the sort of natural fourth evolution where like they turn into an original form or they grow features that they always wanted to grow. Mega Evolution is literally forcing extra energy into a power, almost like filling up a balloon with too much air. It's literally energy ripping out of the Pokemon and causing them to have a form change. Mega Evolution is not normal or not good in the lore of Pokemon. It of course enhances them because they're turning into like a temporary fourth evolution. But you can see with a lot of Pokedex entries like Glalie, the dude's jaw busted. Like he didn't want that happening. So with the lore of Pokemon, it could be that the Pokemon that got Mega Evolutions are the only ones in existence. With the way the lore is, it doesn't have to be infinitely expanded. But the idea is that Mega Evolution is exclusive to Kalos and doesn't exist in the previous dimensions, previous universes. The universe with red, blue, and yellow, gold, and silver, and ruby, and sapphire, and diamond, and pearl, that all takes place in a different universe where Mega Evolution never happened. The Kalos incident with AZ never happened, and Mega Evolution never came to be because it wasn't exactly something natural. It's, it's a forceful energy that makes the Pokemon transform, which of course can lead to the discussion of whether Sun and Moon takes place in the same universe where there isn't Mega Evolution, which isn't true, of course, because there are trainers who come from the Kalos region and they have Mega Evolution, but it shows how within Kalos it is. Mega Evolution doesn't really expand to other regions, and the only reason Dexio and Cena give you a Mega Ring in Sun and Moon is because you're the champion of that game. They wanted to give you the special thing that's exclusive to their region. I'm going all over the place with this video because I'm trying to give you guys as much information on Mega Evolution because if they want to step away from Mega Evolution and they wanted to just have it as a this thing where there's 48 Pokemon, they've got Mega Evolutions, they're the only ones in history known to have them, it would make sense. It would make sense with the lore of Pokemon. It would make sense for them to do that. When you get 30 new Mega Evolvers in each game, it really does water it down. And in case you're wondering, i I rather than water it down. Of course, I want to see more Mega Evolutions. I feel like they can deal with whatever there is to come. It, they can continue to introduce more and more things. But it makes sense why they have a reason to step away from it. Now, I, I'm not going to end this video on that note because there is perfectly good reason for them to introduce new Mega Evolutions. Nobody said those 48 are the only ones. You can keep the concept as is, like I said. You can make it so only Kalos has Mega Evolutions and it doesn't really expand to other regions. But you can still introduce like one, two, three new Mega Evolutions in one game. Instead of freaking 30, they could focus it back down, set people's expectations back down low, and keep it to a minimum and continue to introduce Mega Evolutions. Look at this, Sinnoh remakes. They come out in let's say 2018 or 2019. Don't say 2018, people are gonna get pissed. All you gotta do is say that Sinnoh takes place in a timeline where AZ visited their region just like Auras because Maxi and Archie ain't supposed to have Megas either with the way X and Y's lore is. And you can give Cyrus a new Mega Evolution. Mega Weavile, Cyrus now has Mega Weavile. Cynthia, you go to verse Cynthia as the champion. She sends out her Garchomp, you beat it. Sends out her last Pokemon, it's Mega Milotic. If you introduce like three Mega Pokemon, which I know is low, but it would make it so freaking tasteful. Like, it would be, it's like the stock market. You only introduce three, it would be so freaking high in demand that people would love the crap out of it. And it would slowly maintain Mega Evolutions and Z moves and everything. It would bring everything together again. And all they gotta do is just introduce just a few, only a few, because I agree with Pokemon. When they can't introduce freaking 30 Megas each game, it would screw up people's expectations. But it would so make sense. If just a few Pokemon you introduce, you already did it in Auras. You gave us this backstory to Hoenn's past where AZ apparently visited the region. Have Sinnoh take place in a timeline where AZ visited and then have them have just a few new Mega Evolutions. And then you can continue that throughout the games. And then 10 years down the line, we have like 20 new Mega Evolutions overall instead of like 200. And that way the concept of Mega Evolution stays fresh, stays unwashed up and Everyone is freaking satisfied. I actually think that's the answer to this question. I think Pokemon ain't just gonna leave it in the past. I think they know how important an epic Mega Evolution is. And I think when Sinnoh Remakes comes, they would introduce a couple regional variants. That would be, you. how would you not? You can't say Alola is the only region that freaking has regional variants. That would be a huge missed opportunity. Break the continuity if you have to. Say, I don't know what happened with the DS Sinnoh, but there's supposed to be regional variants. Break the continuity. Introduce... Freaking regional variants. I don't know about Z crystals because it's supposed to be exclusive to Alola. But if you want to bring them, bring them in and introduce just like three new Mega Evolutions. If you're spoiled, you can wish for five. But we're getting none right now, right? Just give me three. You know, five is actually a good number. Who else could have Megas? 
Let me see, who else is a freaking prominent trainer? I hope I didn't go freaking all over the place with this. And hopefully you guys get what I mean. But that's the answer to this question. Pokemon is clearly, very clearly trying to move away from Mega Evolution. It's too big a concept. They wanted to be sure when X and Y came out that everyone was on board and interested. And they got people way too sure. And they realized that they can't keep it going for too long. But they can slowly just keep it in the game and continue to introduce just three freaking mega evolutions per generation for the sake of everything for the sake of enjoyment for the sake of the hyping season and for the freaking meta game mega evolutions were so important to the meta game and having both mega evolution and z crystal adds to your whole strategy thing masuda have as much room possible for strategy and things are gonna work out anyhow i hope you all follow me for this video be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it if you agree with what i said and let me know your own thoughts in the comments below what do you think about the unconfirmed but very obvious perspective on Game Freak's end that Mega Evolution is clearly going way too far and they need to slow down or stop it. And let me know if you think the idea of just introducing like three to five. I'm getting spoiled, man. I said one to three in the beginning. Like a good three to five Mega Evolutions for each generation would solve the equation as well as, I guess, you know, regional variants. I might make another video for regional variants because that's a freaking huge topic. But that's all time for this video, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.